Hello, my friends all over Asia. I uh, want to talk a little bit about something that I have read many, many times, and it comes from 1 Samuel chapter 17. Everybody knows the story of David and Goliath. Obviously, it's a very famous story that everybody has heard of, but as I was reading it, I read something I had never seen before when David said Goliath was defying the armies of God. He didn't say he was defying God. He said he was defying the army of God, which is really interesting. So I thought I need to look up this word and find out exactly what it means. So I looked up defy and it has four meanings that are really, really significant. Number one, to confront with a short power or resistance. Wow, that's awesome. That means I need to know who I am in Christ. Number two, a decision that defies all logic. Well, in today's society, this happens a lot because we have to go against what society is bringing forth or we will be seen as someone that's on the outside, defying logic. Well, I've never been a normal Christian. And I pray that you're not a normal Christian either, because normal never changes anything in the world. Number three, it says to challenge to do something considered impossible. Well, again, in today's society, as a Christian, we're doing all kinds of things that seem to be impossible. We're coming up against the society that is trying to be a global entity. And as a Christian, as an individual who has... Christ in my heart, sometimes I come up against things that seem to be very impossible for me. But I do them anyway, because that's what God told me to do. Number four, it says to challenge to combat the power. Oh yeah. Well, sometimes we have to fight for what we believe in. Here in 1 Samuel, it says, 40 days the giant confronted the armies of Israel. Morning and night he would come out. He would in fact come out every day and he his physical stature would scare Israel because he was so big. He was intimidating. He was defying the armies of God. He said, send somebody out to fight. I don't care who it is. Just a representative, which is really interesting, because Christ is our representative and Goliath is the enemy's representative. I don't care if it's a man, a woman, a child, I don't care. Send somebody out to fight. I have heard about this God of Israel, but I have never seen him. Because I am a warrior, and I have been a warrior since my childhood, and I have never lost a battle, so I want to see this army of God. I want to see this God that you're talking about all the time. Don't just talk about him. Show him to me. Goliath was tired of hearing about the power of God. And, and the ark, wherever the ark was, that's where God was. And there was no way that the armies of God could be beaten. So nobody would fight him because every time he'd come out, the armies of Israel would become terribly afraid and they would run away. Now I find this really interesting because it is very relevant to what's going on in our lives today. We as the body of Christ are confronted with this same type of enemy. And what do we do? Often we run away in fear. But it says we overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. We are covered with the blood of Christ. And Christ's blood is more than enough. Goliath was very self-assured. Nobody could fight against him. Nobody could win. Nobody on the face of the earth could overtake this giant because he was so big. Everybody was afraid. 
Now, I find it interesting that where Israel was, was owned and given to them by God. Where the Philistines were, was owned by Israel. And the valley in between them was owned by Israel. So, I'm a little confused here. The enemy had come trying to take the land that God had given Israel. This should never happen. But because of the giant, they were afraid to do anything, and it says every time he came out, they ran away. Is that what we do? The enemy still does the same thing to us. He comes to us and tells us how big and how powerful he is, and that everything is going wrong in your life. Because you've done everything wrong. You've sinned again. You've done this again. You did that wrong. Well, if I'm covered by the blood of Christ, that doesn't make any difference. Because everything that I have done in the past, everything that I do in the present, and everything that I do in the future is covered under the blood. Therefore, His grace is upon me. Now, we need people in our lives who will encourage us and who will challenge us and who will help us, but... My question is, how many true friends do I have in my life? Actually, not very many. I only have probably two, three, maybe four or five real friends who will stand with me through everything, thick, thin. Doesn't matter what I've done, what I don't do. They will be there when I need them. They will pray for me when I need them. Well, David was a young man who did not know that God could not use him. This is wonderful. We need to be at the same place. We need to know that God will use us regardless of the situation, regardless of what is going on in our lives. God is willing to use us, and he is able to use us if we will say yes. Everybody was seeing and is seeing through the eyes of the natural. But David was seeing through the eyes that God gave him. Can I trust my future to a God that I can't see, that I've never physically seen? In verse 26, David asked, What will a man get to kill his Philistine? Ending the defiance of Israel. Who? Who is this pagan Philistine anyway? that he is allowed to defy the army of the living God. It's called faith and courage. The more I know God, the more assured I am that he's going to use me. The more faith I'm going to be able to, to use, the more courage that's going to be in my heart. When the enemy comes and reminds me of my past, I remind him of his future. I know where I'm going, but I also know where he's going. I'm going to heaven. Where is he going? David was seeing the God of Israel being defied, and he said, somebody has got to do something about this. We cannot stand here and allow this, this uh, giant to defy the armies of God. The decision to defy all logic. Everybody told him, David, you don't understand. See, you're just a child, and he's been a warrior since his youth. He has never lost a battle. You cannot go out there and fight him. Who do you think you are? Well, I've heard that many times in my life. Who do you think you are? Well, I know exactly who I am. I'm a child of God. <clears throat> and by being a child of God, that means I can overcome anything with the help of God. Not on my own, but with the help of God. By faith, I am able to overcome anything that is an obstacle in my life. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. That means it's very important every day to read the Word, to get the Word in me, so faith can grow, faith can build. Because out of my mouth, my heart speaks. Whatever is in my heart is going to come out whether I like it or whether I don't. David overcame by what was in his heart. Faith in God. Courage in God. We can do the same thing. Don't give up. Don't ever quit. 
know that God is on your side. And just like David, the young man, God is going to use you. All you have to say is, yes, I am willing, God, for you to use me. Please use me today. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for all you are doing through all of us. May we in, be encouraged today that you are faithful, you are more than enough. And yes, you want to use every one of us by the grace of God and the blessing of God being upon every person I know all over Asia. May this day be a great day for you.